awesome. Hi, my name is Lisa Brody, and everybody watches AccessTV.org. Peace. Downtown Access uh, TV.org studios in downtown uh, Hartford. Uh, the day is August the 17th. I uh, hope everybody is having a very nice day. It's a very nice, comfortable day again in New England. I uh, just want to get a few things addressed right off at the bat. There's going to be an uh, anti violence rally today at 6 o'clock uh, uh, at 82 Sterling Street. Uh, basically, a young man was killed this past week. A senseless killing and I don't know if it's going to be a lot of people that's going to be attending but I think everybody on that street and everybody in the community needs to try to show some um, support uh, basically this past week I've been doing many different topics the first couple days Monday through Wednesday dealing with political issues yesterday just trying to deal with issues of you know jobs careers uh, opportunities and now I'm going to kind of get into, you know, is it easy to get the job done or not get the job done? Because really, when you look at the big sense of the big bottom line, it's either what you can do or what you can't do. Uh, you could always look at the reasons why people do one thing or why they do something else. I mean, I brought up yesterday so many different factors about jobs, businesses, opportunities, did a little bit of overnight research, and it still comes back to the same or reality. Can you get things done or can you not get things done? Um, and many people in this country just right now are not able to always get everything that they need or everything that they want. You got some factors where you have a lot of men out there and women, but mostly men that feel like breaking the law, selling drugs, robbing, committing crimes is their way to get what they want and get what they need. Other people don't do that. Uh, they try to work, they try to go to school, they try to invest, whatever little bit that they can do. So I try to weigh both sides of the equations. Sometimes, as I mentioned before, when your back is to the wall, you screwed up and you only know one way. And unfortunately, if that one way is the wrong way, then that's the path that you go down. But there's a lot of consequences that goes into going down that path of doing things the wrong way. Selling drugs and drug dealing is a big part of our society with the underground economy, like I mentioned, that I might want to get into a little bit. You know, I don't know if you can take a job uh, and really compete with the drug game the way it is set up. See, the thing about the drug game is the drug game is basically when you can buy a product at a low price and get a high rate of return. And a job market really don't fit into that equation in most cases. So now you're talking about a person that many times who, you know, 20 years ago when it was really flourishing all over the country at a very high level, uh, a person at the low end could sometimes come up with $20 and then he can take $20 and turn it into $200. And that's just the whole, that's the whole monopoly game of how the drug market can go from one level to the uh, next level. Job market is not quite that simple. When the company hires you for a base price, unless you get a raise or, or a promotion, your base pay pretty much stays the same. So, you know, cost of living doesn't really uh, stay the same. You know, the economy changes. There's all a lot of different other factors that gets into the whole reasons why people will sometimes do the wrong thing or do the right thing. You can get into religion, spirituality, having a higher purpose, believing in God. Uh, knowing the Ten um, Commandments, and some people could even know all of those uh, beliefs and still end up doing the wrong thing. So it's a real tough vice sometimes when you get into drugs, the prostitutions, the alcohol and drugs, the illegal and uh, legal forms of uh, gambling. Those are four real structural vices that exist in our society that you are competing against and what at all, at all on particular times. Even on the low level, because I mentioned this about 
the argument, well, not the argument, but just a debate I had with somebody about, you know, paying somebody $10 more for doing lawn care. I did a little research, and actually that $10 can make a big difference when you add it all up. Somebody that cuts our grass for $30 uh, per cut, and then the person wants $40 per cut, when you add up of cutting grass three times a day for $30, that's $90. Four times a day, I mean three times a day for $40, that's $120. When you add that up per month, there is a difference between what you'll have at the end of the month comparable for making $40 per cut than what you would making $30 or per cut. So money always plays into the uh, equation when you're talking about choosing what you want to do and choosing what you don't want to do. That $10 can make a big difference. Uh, what we need to be focusing on is the differences on why some segments of our society still look one way and other societies look a totally a different way. I know somebody that actually has bought a second home down in South Florida, uh, one of the affluent areas, Aventura. And basically, you have a lot of areas in that part of the country that you have a lot of condos, a lot of um, development, a lot of um, retirees, a lot of international travelers. And then you go into the other areas like Liberty City, Overtown, and even with Overtown, I was watching the first 48 hours last night, and basically there was a homicide in the Overtown. Overtown is basically a part of Miami, Florida. It's one of the low social economic depressed areas along with other areas, but Liberty City is in the part. Overtown actually is right in or right outside the downtown district. I'm not that familiar with Miami, never really been down there, but I you know, look at a lot of shows and talk to different people about that particular area. And basically, even the police officer, when they was investigating the homicide, and he wasn't satisfied with getting cooperations from people in the um, community, he was saying, well, these people have to live here. You know, it's social economic factors that they can't always uh, blow the horn and come forward because people know these people. It's just a lot of factors that when you live in an environment, what you have to deal with every single day. That can kind of get into the differences of, of having a choice of being able to decide where you want to work and where you want to live. It's a lot easier to make a decision on deciding where you want to work because when you go to a place to work, you're only dealing with that place for maybe four to eight hours if you decide to do overtime. When you make a, when you make a choice and a decision where you want to live at, it affects you really 24 hours, you know, 365 days a year. You can get up, go outside of that environment where you work at, and get away from your um, neighborhoods, get away from whatever that's bothering you. But at the end of the day, you still got ties directly where you live at. And, you know, that's why you don't see many people wanting to pass mandatory residency requirement laws when you talk about certain positions like police officers that you have to directly live where they do their duties at. You talk about an area like Liberty City down in Miami, Overtown, where you got a tremendous high crime rate, you know, drugs all over the place. You tell a police officer now that is used to living in Coral Gables, a nice affluent community, uh, that he has to, to get the job as a Miami or police officer, live directly in Overtown, live in Liberty City. He might, man, the, the, the average guy is not going to want, or the average police officer or the, or the average worker is really not going to want to be committed and confined to having to live in that type of um, environment. So working at a place, working in a society where you work at, and obviously you want to work in a nice, safe uh, community too. You don't want to work in a high crime, neglected, dirty, run down, you know, area where you're dealing with a lot of um, distress. But you could deal with that a little bit better. Making a decision where you decide to live at is one of the biggest investments you can make in your life. It determines where you're going to school at, where you pay your taxes at, where you decide to vote at. It affects a lot more areas of your life where you live at than where you work at. Uh, so that's why many people don't want no mandatory um, requirements that somebody has to decide to them where you have to live at. But your social economic factors, how much money you have, how much money you can save and invest, what you are required, what your criteria are, can determine on where you are going to decide to live at. And sometimes you just can't do anything about it. You know, everybody don't want to live in a high crime, bad, 
rundown investment area where your property is not worth anything, your standard of living is not taken uh, seriously, seriously um, enough, your educational system is not up to par. I'm pretty sure if you know my friends who recently bought a second condo down in Aventura, Florida had to make a decision where they had to go to Overtown, they would have a complete different perspective. So we got to understand when people do certain things, whether it's the right thing, it's the wrong thing, you got to have all of the factors in place on why people are making these um, decisions. This drug dealing being sold on my street where I live at. It's not a high drug infested street, but there is a drug house, there is drug dealing that goes on. And that's just the way of life. I mean, you could talk about getting cooperation with the uh, vice and narcotics uh, squad and, you know, advocating to getting drugs off of the of your street but at the end of the day it's just going to be pushed to some other particular street if you don't have a legitimate long-term plan so i don't think in this society right now in this country we really have a guaranteed long-term plan of how to make our communities and our society really what it can and really what it should be and that's just a tough pill that you have to sometime accept and swallow because at the end of the day and I, get, and I got into this the other day talking about politics. When you are in a situation where you've been seeing the same conditions for such a long period of time, it just discourages you and beats your mind up sometimes that this whole political system is not going to work for me. It's not going to work for my family. It's not going to work for my um, community. So I don't, need to even, I don't even need to waste my time participating in this system. So there's traps that's out there. There's definitely crime and drugs and guns and you know other factors of people preying on people preying on people that's vulnerable knowing that again you have to live in this environment you go out there starting to talk to the police and people find out that you are working with the police department that could sometimes jeopardize your life so you have to make tough decisions sometimes just on where you live at where you work at again you got to make decisions too but it's a still a lot different of the type of decisions that you will have to make on a long-term level you are more directly in control to some degree where you work at because it's just you and your employer and your co-workers so it's not easy sometimes when people say people are doing things that's illegal people are doing things that's wrong to all of a sudden make the uh, make the um decision to find out you know why these people continue to do what they're doing time after time i'm pretty sure us as a society don't like the things that we see we don't like grunt gar guns we don't like crime we don't like people not going to school we don't like to see people hanging all over street corners we don't like to see people jam packed at the department of social service uh facilities monday through friday looking for handouts but you got to sometimes put yourself in these people's positions. If you make one mistake, you get your life off track. It's not easy to get yourself back on track. And making bad decisions sometimes could be a routine that people get into. You have tremendous burdens. So I'm just really trying to cool off today. Uh, you know, it's not that hot, but just trying to keep myself cool. Sorry about that. But basically, it's just a, a tough decision sometimes to do the right thing or to do the wrong thing. I mean, when, you, when you're trying to do the right thing and you're trying to go and make your life better and you don't see what you would like to see and you have to stick with it, you have to be persistent, you have to believe that what I'm out here trying to do is going to make a difference and that you don't see no evidence. I mean, that's the kind of form of faith that you have to have, you know, of, of uh, looking at life in a different um, perspective. So it's not an easy decision sometimes when people see the whole big picture and you don't see what you think you need to see or what you would uh, like to see. So, again, hopefully people were able to get a little bit more out of this program. This is the last day for the week of doing the small report until Monday. Uh, this program is online, accesstv.org, Monday through Friday. Where I'm going to try to continue to get this routine going with different topics and different issues every single day. Every now and then, there might be a special report that I might get into. Uh, but right now, just a basic 15 minute routine broadcast care downtown, accesstv.org studios. I really appreciate the work that my executive producer has done putting this program um, together. And hopefully we can expand it and make it better, but still keep the base format in place. 
And again, this is going to be a big anti-violence rally today at 6 o'clock at 82 Sterling Street. I have some family that even lives on that street. They definitely need to be involved and be um, concerned because, hey, if somebody kills somebody a few houses from you, you could be the same uh, person that something goes wrong. They might try to shoot and kill you. I don't have all the exact details on how this homicide took place, but it was a very senseless killing that basically this young man was just trying to get people to get off of the street and go inside the house. And then all of a sudden, basically, he got killed. Um, the person is still out there. The person needs to be apprehended. And this is a major problem that we have all over our country, dealing with right and dealing with wrong. So I had a very good time doing this program for the first full week, and I hope to see you this up and coming Monday again. And until that, until that next time, it. keep the faith. Let's do it.